จริงนโมทัสบาเกวะโตอาระหะโตสัมมาสัมบูดัสสะอเมจ to the blessed noble and perfectly enlightened one นัมโมสัตถโตสุเชโตเยโอลาหุติสัมมิยาโอสัมปุตโตชีอุสังเซนเซนเวียมิยาฟาบัยเชนวันเจนันซาวยูวะจินเจนวันเดโซชิยันเจรูไลจันสุอี The unsurpassed, deep, profound, subtle, wonderful Dharma, in hundreds of thousands, of millions of eons, is difficult to encounter. Now that I've come to receive and hold it within my sight and hearing, I vow to fathom the thus come one's true and actual meaning. Venerable Master and Dharma friends, welcome to our sutra lecture tonight. Uh, we are going to begin tonight by chanting the name of the sutra and the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas that brought it to us here on the front cover of your text. And may I ask, uh, do you do, do our tech team know how to set up the presenter software on my Mac, on my laptop? Because I'm going to. You do. Okay, great. I'm going to be uh, using. The screen tonight a lot because we have actually gone past our translated section. So uh, we're going to do one line of the sutra and then on to the the screen and the projector. So we'll do a live translation as we go. Meanwhile, let us begin with the uh, with the title of the sutra. นโมตัสสะวะฟุวะยินดีวะยินหะเหวฟุปุสะนะตัสสะวะฟุวะยินดีวะยินหะเหวขอผู้สานโมตัสสะวะฟุวะยินดีวะยินหะเหวขอผู้สานโมตัสสะวะฟุวะยินดีวะยิน a ห้หวยขอผู้สานะตาฟังกวางฟุวะยินจีวะยิน a ห้หวยข
to page 14 and 15, which should be the very last, save one, the very last English and Chinese facing pages. <coughs> and we are down at the very bottom. In the Chinese, we're on the next to, next to last line, which is chu chu yo er zhong ye. And then the English is grasping, also has two kinds of karma. So we'll start out with our, our printed text and then hook up our electronic tools and continue. You do? What's wrong with my book? I need a copy, by golly. So, is, is that right, Mark? You showed me the... Yours, yours is short, too. So, yeah, good, thanks. Okay, you need a copy, and Marek needs a copy. Well, my goodness. Now, uh, let's see. In that case, we can sit right here. I was going to... Uh, take us into the realm of projectors and screens, but this is much, much preferable. Are they all? Oh, you did? So, um, what, Marek, what you showed me was the bottom of page 16, was that right? The bottom of 16 and 17, which is the same. So that last line is available, right? Okay. My sutra text is way behind. I missed one cycle of, of pasting in. And further, we're still <laughs> right where we were. That means that I will uh, also go up to the projector, but uh, not where I thought I was going to lecture from, which is fun. That gives me a chance to uh, be sincere and uh, make things work. It's not as bad, not as bad as what happened to me last week. You all should appreciate your Dharma master. My goodness. I arrived at Huafan University in the company of my delegation, as a member of our delegation, uh, seven days ago, and uh, was fully prepared to join in a panel discussion with my colleague, Doug Powers, and arrived to discover my face on a poster advertised as giving a 90-minute lecture on a topic that I had not prepared. And it was widely advertised all over the campus. And I had exactly 40 minutes to prepare. So I faked it. Ha. Boy, good thing I practiced as a, an actor while I was, before I left home, so I could spin, you know. And I had my guitar, which helped a lot. So. Anyway, so I have the sutra to rely upon this evening, and it's the same topic, we're just moving forward. In fact, I translated that section, but we just haven't done our paste-in yet. <coughs> Excuse me. So let us then look at page 16, down at the bottom. And it's the very last line. Ready? Palms together, please. Fozi, Si Zhong Wu Ming, Ai Chu Bu Duan, 
是烦恼道。Over to the right, let's read together. Disciples of the Buddha, when ignorance, love, and grasping are not stopped, that is the path towards affliction. I actually didn't paint the picture entirely. My 90-minute talk was entirely in Chinese. Wow. Think of the suffering that I inflicted upon those that poor audience. <laughs> oh my goodness! All right, so we are in the sixth ground of ten grounds, six stages of ten stages, and this is a chapter of a sutra spoken by the Buddha. Actually,、uh, the Buddha enlisted, deputized other disciples to speak it on his behalf. But it was his wisdom being brought forth. It's called the Flower Adornment Sutra, the Flower Garland Sutra. In Sanskrit, it's called the Avatamsaka. Avatamsaka, five A's, A's, five A sounds. Avatamsaka Sutra, the Flower Garland of Flowers. And it's the sutra that describes the path of the Bodhisattva, how a Bodhisattva behaves. How he thinks, how he speaks, how she behaves, thinks, and speaks, and a bodhisattva is someone who, whose life has a different center. We, by and large, depending on your level of enlightenment, so that's a non-binding we. We have this thing in the center called the self. Which pretty much is our gold standard for how we behave, speak, and think, and what benefits the self we do, what harms the self we avoid, and life goes on. We pursue pleasure and run from pain based on what, at the moment, we our self and our habits tell us is the good stuff. We grab for the good stuff with gusto. And we avoid the bad stuff with energy, with effort. So the bodhisattva is different because he or she has deconstructed that self, has taken it apart through deep, careful, personal analysis and experience. It's not a theory. The bodhisattva has seen that that self is a constructed. Temporary, illusory self, and doesn't listen to its narrow, conscious, sense-based desires and aversions any longer. The bodhisattva instead has an experience of identity with. Things which before seemed to be outside himself, now he sees as integral to himself. He has integrated; she has integrated with a larger body. In Chinese, they call it tongti da be, same body, great compassion. No difference between himself and all living things. No difference. That the differences are. Habit, habitual ways of seeing. The bodhisattva looks beyond the narrow confines of this constructed self. I am this. This is me. This is mine, and everything else is outside me. And I'm alone, and I'm afraid, and the world is a mess, and somebody else is to blame. And the bodhisattva says, "No, actually, the energy is. It's either an energy." It's a it's a particle, or it's a wave, and it's a particle, and then it's a wave, and it's form and it's emptiness, and it's emptiness and it's form, and emptiness is not different than form, and form is not different than emptiness. Says Sariputra, you know, the Bodhisattva realizes that prajna paramita, that wisdom that goes beyond the self, and bingo. So,、um, not to say ayahuasca is transcendent wisdom, but to say that. Um, there are <coughs> experiences that are available to people that can, in some way,、uh, 
change the sense of, of the self stopping with the skin and locking me here, locking me into this world. So, not, not different. Uh, not to say the same at all, but just to say, here was this wonderful article talking about how um, there are interventions into depression, which is this little understood pervasive uh, response to the world that we've created, the 21st century, pressure and stress. So, uh, the... Uh, Bodhisattva is able to get there without ayahuasca, which is quite interesting too. So. All right, disciples of the Buddha. We are now on the sixth of ten stages, and this particular stage is talking about um, the insight that the Buddha bestowed after his awakening called Pratitya Samutpada. Kind of fun to say that. Pratitya Samutpada. Seven syllables. And it somehow it's made it into Western culture as Pratitya Samutpada. If you study meditation long enough, you'll run into that word. It's a Sanskrit word, and uh, it has multiple translations. It's called... Uh, dependent coexistence or conditioned arising. Uh, it's called uh, codependent arising, different, different kinds of names. And the idea is that nothing exists on its own. Everything exists connected to something else. When the connections break, the thing goes away. That's the basic idea. Pratitya Samutpada. And the Buddha helped us further by describing how things coexist, how they arise. And he called them links. Twelve things that, like a chain, that tug back and forth. Things that link us together. And us meaning our bodies and the world around us, our thoughts, our um, metabolism, the way our body digests and breathes and recreates itself and destroys itself. All of that happens in a cycle of 12 links that go from ignorance all the way to birth and death and then the suffering that that experience creates back to ignorance. And being a description given by the Buddha, he didn't stop there. He said, further, if you want to unlink it, here's what you do. I did it. You can do it. Unlink it. Here's how, said the Buddha. And so there are people, there are uh, both practitioners and scholars who say that Pratitya Samutpada, conditioned arising, is the Buddha's greatest teaching. Uh, the Mahayana, our Chinese tradition, doesn't say that. It puts something else in that place of the greatest, but it's certainly up there. Um, why some scholars claim uh, my dissertation advisor was one of those. He's in the uh, Jodo Shinshu tradition, the pure land of Japanese Buddhism. They celebrate Pratitya Samapada as, as the, the most unique Buddhist teaching. That is to say, nobody else described it that way. They say because nobody else saw it. You need some very clear, steady vision in order to see Pratitya Samutpada happening. But if you sit still and focus on what's really going on inside, I can see it if I get to that level of stillness and focus. Um, it's like what? Um, watching a description of binoculars the other day. What are binoculars like and 
Why are magnification of binoculars important to know? It's because people would think, wow, I want to be able to see that owl over there in the, in the, the uh, nook of the tree there. And so the biggest magnification would be best, right? So I want 10 power binoculars, that take, or 12 power. So I want the binoculars to give me 12 times larger than what I can see without the glass in front of me, 12 times bigger. The problem is, when it's 12 times bigger, it's also 12, time, it's also 12 times narrower than what I see, and the slightest movement makes it wiggly, and I can't see it because it's doing this. Whereas if I had six times, I would be seeing this, and the movement wouldn't disturb me as much. So it's always a trade-off. And the, so I, as I was looking at this, uh, it was a, a, a YouTube video describing how binoculars magnify and why biggest is not best, because when you get there, you have to put it on a tripod before it's steady. Otherwise, it's doing that because of the size of the magnification. So if you turn those binoculars around and think about looking at your thoughts, at your mind, how do you know that the 12 links are doing this right this instant as we're sitting in the Buddha Hall at Berkeley Monastery? It's happening right now. The 12 links are tugging away on each other unless those of you sitting here are in the samadhi, in which case, if your mind is really still, ignorance can go away and that first link doesn't link. Following the Buddha's prescription of how to end that kind of chain drive. You think of your bicycle chain. The 12 links are really analogous to a bicycle chain, how on the sprockets, around it goes, around it goes, you know. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, it's not the case that you have to break the bicycle chain. You, it's kind of, it's in a way, it's as if you reverse it. And I think our analogy breaks down because the bicycle doesn't, doesn't go backwards if you reverse it. But uh, when you break that first link, when you see through ignorance, then all the links no longer hug. And at that point, what happens? You see through the illusion. You're free to not link, 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 link 12 times to suffering. Externally, there's no difference, but you don't go through the birth and death and its accompanying grief and sorrow, misery and pain. And that's liberation. That was what the Buddha did. Is he was no longer subject to samsara. Nirvana is the result of that. So, there you go. That's why this 12, the 12 links are supposed to be the Buddha's signature teaching according to some, some of the people who describe, describe the Buddha Dharma. Okay, yes, Sarah. You're going to have to remove your hand from there. Is it possible to break it at ignorance? Mm -hmm. It is. There. Say again. Sarah's question: Is it possible to break the links at ignorance? There are supposed to be three places where, among the twelve, you can actually break it. And they all, all three of them, have to do with your meditation. If your meditation is really still, what you have is, traditionally, samadhi, right? Samadhi is a Sanskrit word, which means purity and stillness. The purity, back to our binoculars, you polish the lens. It's perfectly pure. It doesn't mean clean, necessarily. It means almost pristine, transparent. It's not, don't think purity like dirty. It just means that it's so refined, there's nothing there. And concentration means that it's bright. The Buddha described the results of samadhi as light. Okay, light, 
banishes darkness. Wuming means no light. Okay? The state, this first, the first situation that tugs the second link and the third and the fourth is no light. Shurfa would all, Master Hua would always describe that as I don't know. I don't know. Why did you want that? Why did you go for it? You knew you didn't want that, but you still went for it. I don't know. Right? Why did you... When you know, you shouldn't. I don't know. I just, I mean, they put it... I, we we're all buddies together. We just all, you know, six-pack. We all, you know. That's why. Because you were, I don't know. When you have light, you go, I, I, thanks. You know, put it down. So that's one place where it breaks. It's the result of wisdom. How does the Chan school describe it? They say you break the Hei Chi Tong, the, la- the, the barrel of black lacquer. They describe ignorance as not only like in your room in the morning before you flick on the light switch, that it's sticky black. It's black like lacquer that you have to chip off, you know. That's how sticky it is. And when you get enlightened, it's like, bah. So if you want a description of it, go to all the Chan Master's poems. You know, Master Empty Cloud said, I've awakened. I'm awake. I've awakened from a dream, he said. So when was the last time you had a nightmare and you woke up sweating and it was like, thank goodness, it was only a dream, right? Now there's light before it was a dark darkness. Or another analogy, you go into the movie theater, right? Turn the lights off, focus on that big screen, the big silver screen, and you enter into the collective dream of those flickering images on the screen, right? So that's the whole 12 links process in a perfect analogy going around, right? Does that make sense? Yes, that's a yes. Can I stop talking? Or, or give me some sign that I've, I've convinced you that... Right, 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 right. Yeah, you gotta do it, of course. It's not a theory, that's the point. Yeah, so it is that. There are two other places uh, where um, you introduce the new concept of meditation, which is patience, right? Which is love, for example, love and grasping. If you can, uh, as that great opportunity comes up to mind and the mind wants to, and you go, been there, done that, got the sweat stained t shirt, don't need it again. The link falls apart because you didn't. Right in your grasp, you didn't. Cheat on your taxes, didn't. Right? So, uh, we'll, we'll go into that at some point in the series, those three links. They're coming up. Okay. Are we good? For the disciples of the Buddha, the Jung Wu Ming, when, when ignorance, love, and grasping, the Jung Wu Ming, I Chu, three things ignorance, I, craving, love, Chu, and the grasping that follows it, Buduan, never stop, do not stop, Shi Fan Nao Dao. That is called. The path of fun now, affliction. And what is affliction? Affliction, it's too, you know, gosh. I wish affliction was a more powerful word because in Buddhism, that word carries the mail. That's the, the bad one. When I started looking at translations of Buddhist texts, affliction just went right by me. It didn't, it didn't have the smell that this word really deserves. Um, Because it wasn't a word I I knew much. Affliction sounded too too much Latin, not enough Anglo-Saxon. 
What's a good Anglo-Saxon word? Hate. Stink. Pain. Grief. You know, yick. That's a good, you know, onomatopoeia. We need a word that's like that. It's like blues. There's one, the blues. It's, it's the path towards the blues. That word we know because we've felt it. Affliction is very polite. It's a you know, professorial word. It's not, it's not a good one. In, in, uh, in Sanskrit, it's klesha. And klesha are the enemy of awakening. Okay? Klesha. In Pali, it's kilesa. Klesha. And greed is a klesha. Anger is a klesha. Delusion is a klesha. They bind us up. When uh, someone asked Master Hua, are you enlightened? You know, he would say, I have no affliction. He would say, I have no affliction. He said, I'm just like you, except I don't have any afflictions. And we go, hmm, he's not enlightened. He wasn't our buzzword. He wouldn't buy our buzzword. Right? But what he had no affliction, which was such a simple statement. But what that means is no greed anymore, no anger anymore, no delusion anymore. No pride, no selfishness, arrogance, ego, no doubts anymore. Those are the five basic afflictions. Greed, anger, delusion, pride, doubt. Those are the big ones. And then they go on to include rage, lack of shame, lack of remorse. There's 28 afflictions that the Buddha described as being the trouble, where it hurts. Trouble, yeah, trouble is the path towards trouble. Trouble is, is a good, that's the good word I'm looking for. Because troubles, plural, is, you know, troubles on my mind. I got trouble. We, that word has got a, a, a home in our folklore. That word's got power in it. Affliction is way too, you know, teacup and the crooked finger. Troubles. We should adopt troubles as a good translation. Yeah, Troubling. Trouble, you know. I got trouble. Dun, 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 on my mind. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. We, that word has resonance in the culture. So, Okay, good. Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. All right. So, when ignorance, love, and grasping are not stopped, when you don't stop them, you're on the road to trouble. Trouble is ahead. That's got some weight to it. Affliction is too... Nobody relates to it. They don't know what it is, but that's the power stuff. All right, done. Now, sorry for the temporary uh, interruption. We interrupt our regularly scheduled sutra lecture to connect you to the internet. We need uh, Marek to go turn those lights off, please. do need my sutra text. I think you're all going to like my desktop.
Isn't he a handsome guy? That's Ollie. All right. When ignorance, love, and grasping are not stopped. Here we go. Here it is. Further, there's the Chinese. Can we, uh, let's see, I'll give you a line and you give it back to me. Xing you bu duan. Shi ye dao. Yu fen bu duan. Shi ku dao. Qian ho ji fen bie. Mie san, let's see, uh, qian ho ji. Chen Ho Ji. Fen Bie Mie. San Dao Duan. Ru Shi San Dao Li Wo. Wo Suo. Dan You Sheng Mie. You Ru Su Lu. All right. Now, let's recite this together starting here with me. When activities are not stopped, that is the path towards the creation of karma. When the other links are not stopped, that is the path towards suffering. Still, when we <coughs> discriminating between before and after, all three paths cease. In this way, the three paths are free of self and what belongs to the self. But birth and death still exist like a bundle of dried grass. To get the whole section, uh, we need to add this. If, if we can communicate what this is saying, it's profound and heartbreaking to the extreme. It's so vast in its scope and um, kind in its intent. All right. We just did this part. Disciples of the Buddha, when ignorance, love, and grasping are not stopped, that is the path towards troubles, affliction, we said. Right? Now, <clears throat> how to understand this? Think of it in terms of the twelve. Ignorance all the way to birth and death and the suffering involved. All right? So this is a, the Buddha is giving us a, um, he's parsing, you know the word? To parse, to uh, divide up, 
to select, to edit, to arrange. The Buddha is arranging those 12 in different combinations. That's what the whole rest of this ground, this chapter is about. The Buddha says, here are the 12, and look at it this way. And he's going, kind of like a deck of cards. He's going, shuffle, shuffle, whoop, shuffle, shuffle, whoop. And you see them in different combinations. Disciples of the Buddha, when ignorance, love, and grasping continue, like they always do, like we always do them, right? We are heading towards trouble, like we always do. Because why? We want stuff that breaks up and goes away. Essentially that. And when it goes away, guess what? Hurts. That's the problem. Right? Pets, for example. Next, okay, continuing on in the same vein, when the second link, activities set in motion by ignorance, are not stopped, when they continue, what happens? We create karma. Now, own that word. All right? Karma redefined. Mostly, when I grew up, karma meant stuff you didn't want. Bad. Kind of mushed together with destiny, fate, you know, all those things that were beyond your power. That's not what the Buddha's calling it. Why? Karma is entirely within our power. Karma is absolutely within our power. It's only karma when we do it a lot, and a lot, and a lot, and it becomes habit. Karma is a neutral word that simply means action. There is good karma. You do it a lot and things work out. It is not the path towards troubles. It's the path towards delight. Because why? You did it that way instead. Okay, so I really want people to own this word, karma. It's action and it's results. Okay, so can you do that, Yvonne? Can you like slide back there? I, I can move if you can't. Don't, yeah. Okay, there we go. We've got a shaved head in the lens there. <laughs> Forever on YouTube, you're going to see the back of your head. Oh my goodness. So I just need to move. If I move, then you, you don't have to torture yourself in your seat there. Okay. So, when activities are not stopped, in other words, when your habits continue, you are creating karma. In other words, you're grooving something in space that didn't exist until you did it. Once you did it, it's really there. Welcome. You grooved it in. It's like a riverbed. Then you want to change it later when you wake up and you say, I shouldn't have been so stupid. Yeah, well, change the river course. You can. You just do it different. But, oh, it feels right. When, that's why habits are so hard, because in their wrongness, they feel familiar. Right? So, um, there's a guy on uh, Twitter now, Leo Barbauta. Arbalta? Leo. I'm advertising for Leo. Leo is a, a meditator guy. He's a, a zen -y kind of guy who's really a wholesome character. And his whole thing is how to make new habits. He's a discipline guy. And how he's got this theory that in order to break a habit, you have to repeat the new behavior X number of times. Right? I don't know what his formula is. But um, his big deal... And he's, he's quite convincing. He's a good writer. He's got countless tweets and, and uh, I think he has a Tumblr blog too. Te telling us how to uh, change the riverbed, right? Reroute the highway that we've been running along. So if you don't do that, you continue with activities, you are creating karma. All right, so we've got link one and link two so far. The other ten... When the other links are not stopped, you're heading towards that experience called dukkha. Ku in Chinese, ku. And suffering, we use it so much it's kind of lost its sting. 
Here's a good one. Misery. Miserable. I was miserable on the airplane coming back from Hong Kong because I had, it was a cold at its peak, a head cold. Drip, sneeze, drip, sneeze, sneeze, drip, drip, sneeze. My poor seatmates on left and right, they were like, you know, because I had a blanket over my head because I was going, <laughs> I didn't want to sneeze into the air, so I sneezed with a blanket covering my head. Like, nine sneezes in a row. And it was, I, my pockets were, okay, you ready? Here, I think this is the same pocket. There you go. Right? Like, you know, countless, I had maybe 15, uh, luckily I was in premium economy and they have big napkins, you know, so I filled my pockets with napkins because I was, whew. anyway, that's misery, right? It won't stop. And you're there at 33,000 feet and the pressure is like, making all your sinuses just can't breathe. That's misery. So that is the path towards misery. Still, says the Buddha, if we stop discriminating, if we don't go one, two, and then the rest, all three paths cease. If we simply break that ignorance with light, ignorance is darkness, Bring light, and it stops. In this way, the three paths, which three paths? The path of klesha, the path of karma, karma, and the path of dukkha. Klesha, karma, and dukkha. Three paths. All three paths cease. And in this way, okay, watch. In this way, Misery, or let's see, uh, troubles, misery, and uh, troubles, karma, and misery, troubles, habits, and misery have no self sticking them together, being the axle that they turn around. And furthermore, there's no object that they turn. However, they're coming into being and they're going away, still happen. Just like a bundle of dry grass. Anybody have pictures in your head when you hear that? What does that mean? That means sages, men and women who wake up to this, still die. They still come and go. Their bodies still come and go. Yeah, it's a, it's a natural analogy. Well, Sulu. Get out your dictionary, graduate student. Come on, you're the PhD candidate. Where's your Matthew Chinese English dictionary when you need it, right? Okay, if you were my professor, Peter Budberg, you would pull out your Kang Shi Zidian and go, oh, Sulu. That's the called, you know, Africanus Deliciosus. And that was first cited by Du Fu in a poem in the Tang Dynasty where he said, and he quoted for it, you know. So that's the scholar. Anyway, so I don't know. Is Sulu tumbleweeds? What's a tumbleweed would be a good analogy. Why did the Buddha say, like dry grass? It's, it's something that in the natural world, everybody knew what he meant. Because why? <clears throat> What's a bundle of dry grass? No internal cohesion. You do this, and it goes, it's no longer a bundle. Right? It's only a bundle because you go, like that. Those three flowers right there, that would be the perfect, you could use that, Exactly, right? So, I'm going to give the cameraman fits now because I'm running all over. Right? Right? You hold these up. Well, no, these are. They're perfect. And what is it? Oh, it's a bouquet of flowers. No, it's not. If I, I won't. But if I were to go, whoo, 
all over the floor, you'd say, oh, it's not a bouquet of flowers, it's three flowers and some, what are these? Blue things, you know, blue, blue blossoms. But we call it a, a bouquet because I'm holding it in my hand. Let it go, and suddenly it loses its identity as a bundle. It's just three flowers with uh, accompanying grasses. So, here's the deal. That's why I say this is so poignant. It's poignant because why? The Buddha is saying there are three, the word is Tao, right? The, the word Tao occurs, occurs three times, times here. Tao, Ye Tao, Ku Tao. Oh, we lost Fan Tao. Here's Fan Tao. Uh, we should probably get the whole thing here. Uma, uma, uma. Here we go, right there. So, here's the word Tao three times. Fan Nao Tao, the path of troubles, right? The road, the, the, ro the highway to trouble, the highway to karma, the highway to dukkha, suffering. So, the Buddha said, among these, Ignorance, love, and grasping. If they don't stop, you're heading towards trouble. Because you're going to why? You're going to love it. You're going to grab it. It's going to go away. It's going to break up because it's only linked. It only exists because of links, including your body. Think of your relationships. Think of society. Think of the civil order called the common good. It's being demonstrated this evening on University Avenue. We'll talk about that in a minute. If number two activity that you do habitually doesn't stop, you've got a habit that's going to make you hurt more because you're grooved into it. And then the others, the other ten are suffering, said the Buddha. They're dukkha because they just roll along. Six sense organs, name and form, contact, feeling, love, grasping, existence, birth, old age, death, and suffering. Those are the question. Okay, you're right. Thank you. Yes, that's correct. Activities and existence. Yes, that's good. Thank you very much. There we go. Yeah, I appreciate that. This is two more links. Those are the, the places where it can break, right? It's xing and yo. So that's activities and activities is two yo is before Sheng, so it's number 10. So, 2 and 10. If Yo, right there, if existence doesn't stop, then you have karma. Now, actually that word came up uh, three lectures ago when we were talking about, I think it might have been Sarah's question, actually. We were talking about what's the difference between existence and birth. One way to describe that is <clears throat> existence is the baby in the womb. It's coming, and you know it's coming, 
but it hasn't arrived. When it's nine months later, it's here. Okay, it's really there. Um, so, is that talking about abortion? If we want to run the analogy out, no, we shouldn't go there. Uh, our monastery might be boycotted and burned. Um, what can we talk about? If it's a thought in the mind, we're not talking about it, the child in the womb, we're talking about a thought in the mind. So, can you consider the possibility of quitting your job and then not do it? Quitting in the mind would be existence. You don't hand the letter to human resources, to HR. You didn't quit. You only considered it. One is existence. It exists, but it isn't formed yet. So you can still stop it. You can still stop it. You follow that level of link? Once it's born, the others, if they don't stop, it's, it's just, just trouble, trouble. It's pain, it's suffering. So, from start to finish, beginning and after, before and after, the if you can get rid of the discriminations between before and after, then all three of these roads just go away because why? You're not tugging. You're not pulling them anymore. So, how do you do it, says the Buddha? Sandao. The paths of trouble, affliction, karma, and suffering have no self and no thing that pertains to the self. In other words, no me and mine. You don't set up your identity in those links. Key phrase. Key, key phrase. You don't set up your identity in this process. You, another way to say it, you flow along with it without saying, this is mine, I love this, I hate this. Hate also works instead of love. You hate this and you can't abide it, and it comes suffering. Right? Okay, you want to ask? You can get rid of the discrimination Okay. Same question? Okay. So the question was what does it mean, the discriminations of before and after? Okay. Here, the Buddha is giving us a. Uh, Think of the twelve rolling along, linking each other kind of in a line, right? Linear, like a train. Cars on a train. Amid this, amid this flow of the links, these three, ignorance, love, grasping, don't stop. Ignorance comes first. Jump to love which is what, number six? Grasping is number seven. Okay? Or seven and eight. If they don't stop, so there's a before and after. Xing, yo. We're missing a comma here. That helps. Okay. When these two, number two and number eight, don't stop, Okay, that's a, you're jumping. See, the Buddha, as I said, the Buddha is shuffling the cards and saying, here's 12. These two work, work this way. These three work this way. The rest work another way. So there's a beginning and, a, and an after. When you meditate, when you get samadhi and stillness, you stop the linking. The linking goes on, but what have you removed? You haven't set up your identity 
anywhere in them. Li wo wo so. Key words down below. So the before and the after says it's that motion of linking. The 12 links are moving forward. They're like, whew, right? Now, I'm giving you that linear. There's an, I'm going to murkify it. I'm going to mix it up again and throw it up in the wind so it gets confusing again, but bear with me. Each of these links also independently links to all the 12. They don't only run forward. They also, so if you remember, we had a chart earlier at one point where it's like it's linear. It's ignorance goes to birth, death, suffering. But if you make them a circle, they all tug each other. They all operate, they all operate as the center. Each one can be a center to all the others. This, these 12 links are not whew, in this passage they are right in this passage the Buddha is pointing out one particular mechanism of how they work if that follows okay so just to say we don't want to think that these 12 links only go in one direction they go in two directions which is if you stop ignorance activity stops consciousness stops Name and form stop, etc. Okay? So there's a linking and then there's an unlinking, which is still Wu Ming all the way to Sheng Si Ku. Hard. Why? This is hard. It's subtle and there's 12. We've got to keep 12 balls in the air. Okay? So understand this is not ABCs. This is already complex, deep insight. All right? How? I didn't hear all right. You're all kind of glazed. Whoa, too much. Hard. So the question was, what is the time mentioned here? Chen Ho, Chen Ho, Ji. Fun bi mia. Chinese goes like this. Before, after, boundaries. Sorry, try that again. Before, after, boundaries. Discrimination of those stops, actually put an end to, then, English would put a then there, three paths end, cease. They stop tugging each other. They stop resulting in those three paths. You are free at that point of what? Fan nao, ye, and ku. You are free of troubles, karma, and misery. They stop for you. Why? Because those three paths no longer operate with you and yours, me and mine, self and what supports the self. That's the whole deal. Okay? Key for people who understand themselves in a psychological way, like us, like our generation, ever since Freud hung out his shingle and started to talk about humans as psychological beings. Beings where mind was more important than body. More a determiner of who we are and what we become than, than body. People with complexes and hang-ups and mental disturbances, right? Neuroses, psychoses, paranoia, schizophrenia, depression. Right? So I got the blues today. I'm feeling depressed. I'm feeling down. That's all psychological description of self. The Buddha says, if you can, right in the midst of all this amazing mechanism, it's the machines of the links here, get rid of your view of self and world. Just see through it. Let that go. Don't see the self as so important. Then no more troubles, no more karma, no more suffering. What would that be like? 
very light, very spontaneous, very free. This is the path to radical freedom. Right? Hungry, you can eat, don't have to eat. Doesn't have to be half decaf latte, double shot mocha frappuccino. Water's fine. Right? You don't have to have it your way. Any way is fine. That's a liberated person. What's, what's the result of this? We don't have sages in front of ourselves, so we don't know what the Buddha described as the goal. But <clears throat> when you, you know, I spent 18 years with Master Xuan Hua, and he, what, was, what did he say? His probably, if you ask people, his hallmark statement, everything's okay, no problem. He said it in English. Everything is okay. No problem. And he lived it. It wasn't just a cute, you know, rhetoric. He meant it. Everything was okay. No problem. To the point where what? The famous Chan master who... Yo sheng mie, yo ru sulu. There was still birth and death, just like a handful of dried grass. That famous Chan master who, when he decided to leave, he leapt up in the air, grabbed the tree branch, and hanging from the tree branch like a eight-year-old schoolboy died. Everybody's going, sure, fool. <laughs> Go on, right? Like who? Like Master Xing An, the monk who wrote the Bodhi Resolve essay, the exhortation to resolve on Bodhi. He died. Crossed his legs, sat on the bed, went off to Nirvana. Right? So all his disciples are crying and crying and so upset and afflicted. Shrif was gone, Shrif was gone. So they prepared his funeral pyre. Right? Shrif sits up and opens his eyes and looks at him. And they all go, ah, it's a ghost, you're back. And he said, birth and death is the big issue. Recite the Buddha's name, you'll be fine lay back down and died again. <laughs> now, that's to die, right? This is like days later. What? It's ridiculous. Impossible. San Dao Duan, right? No more pain, no more misery, no more karma. So, yeah, you're free at that point. Like who? Like old Mrs. Wong. Who's old Mrs. Wong? Old Mrs. Wong was the neighbor of our, some of our laymen in Sunnyvale in 1993, 1994. So there I was at ITI lecturing. Kai, were you coming to the lectures there? No, yeah, Kai and Mai were coming down there. Anybody else? Who else is there? Guo Hua? What's I Yi Jing Yuan? When they ITI Zhang, Zhang Jing, you may lie. Ji de ma? Yi Zhou Zhou San Yan, you may so I know some people were. So I was lecturing on, I think it was the Medicine Buddha Sutra. And because I had an exam, uh, I was a graduate student at GTU. I had an exam, so I didn't have a story. And, you know, everybody waits for the story at the end of the lecture. It's kind of like dessert at the end of the meal. And I didn't have time to get a good story together. So I... Uh, broke one of my rules, which was I went out to the assembly, that would be you guys, and I said, you know, I said, I, we've really been 
talking here about birth and death and medicine Buddha. And does anybody have any stories that you would be willing to share about anybody who recited the Buddha's name and went off to rebirth? I mean, that's 99 out of 100 times, people all go, <gasps> looking at my shoes and looking at her shoes and, oh, look at her shoes. Uh huh, Ferragamo. Uh huh, yeah, look at their shoes. Nobody goes, right? Sandy, were you, you weren't coming there. Peggy was. Peggy was there. And I said, anybody have any stories? Three people leapt out of their seats with their hands in the air. So I got a story. It was uh, Wang Hongyi, who then also went off to rebirth. Wang Hongyi, he was the kind of the, the uh, not, what do you say? He was the leader, without being a leader, of the San Jose lay group that later went on to Wan Sishio. Anyway, he said, I got a story. Old Mrs. Wong, she's in our apartment complex, and nobody knew much about her. She was Taiwanese, and we, sh we would see her when we took the trash out, you know, in the, in the back alley, going to the dumpster. Only time we'd ever see her. She always smiled. She was a round old lady, grandma, very sweet, always, you know, nia, nia. People would talk to her, and she'd always laugh. And then we would hear from her apartment, And we knew that she was reciting the Buddha's name with her wooden fish. That's all we knew about her. And she was just some sweet old lady. We kind of, everybody knew her in the neighborhood. Nobody knew anything about her. And then we noticed we hadn't seen her for like two days. And somebody said, what about Wang Lao Tai Tai? I don't know. Maybe we should check her up. So they kind of knocked on her door and noticed it was open. And we went in. And didn't see her. And then we went to the bedroom. And there she was, sitting in full lotus in Buddhist robes with a smile on her face, dead. She'd gone off to rebirth. You know, this is Wang Hung East. And me in the, in the room is going, you know. Right. Right there. There's still birth and death. Because why? What comes together comes apart. Because it's only there by conditions. That's the point of this whole teaching. Remember what it was about. The Buddha wanted to find out whether death could be defeated. His conclusion was, yep. And these are his lab notes. Scientific experiment, this is his report. Right? Yeah, here's what's going on, said the Buddha. Lift the hood. Here's the engine. So what's going on? Why there's a... Yes. Right. Good. There we go. No, it doesn't work. Did we try the battery? Just push up. Yeah. Okay. There you go. I mean, uh, you just said that after Buddha, there is no me and mine. Right? But they have the first and second. Yes. Yes. Yo sheng, yo mie. Not if you can be, but not necessarily. Yo shen zi, for the first time. Zi yo. So, just what lai ming chu bai. Right? So, her, her question was in this way, let's, okay, we'll look at both. In this way, when the three paths are free of self and 
belongs to the self. In other words, the body and the world. When what's inside and what's outside no longer are in the center, however, you still have sheng mie, birth and death, and then, then the Buddha gives you a picture. What's it like? It's like a bunch of grass stuck together that has no core. It still happens, but you, the wa and the wasa, are no longer pulled by it into the next round of 12. Unless you choose to be, as a bodhisattva would come back on vows. Okay, so her question was, does birth, does rebirth follow this experience? And the answer is, not necessarily. For the first time, not necessarily. So, if we want to analyze this, what's the deal? The deal is the self in the middle. That's the Buddha's accomplishment, is he saw through the deepest levels of ego and, you know, if we're doing the whole thing, superego and id and libido and all of the, the names that Freud gave his analysis, the Buddha took it back to consciousness itself. He saw through consciousness and let's use another set of terms. He understood energy as both particles and waves, as particles, as waves, and as neither particles and waves. Yes, I am a mass of particles. Yes, I am a sequence of waves. I am neither and I am both. So all sides of the tetralemma, you know, the logical discussion, fall apart. Am I a mass of sunbeam? Yeah. But, you know, watch this long enough and you'll see it falls apart. I'm flaking down the drain when I take a shower. That's why I have to put cream on it, you know. So, right? Got all that? Powerful, huh? Sarah? Can we get her the mic? Is that mic doesn't work? The body, the things we cling to, what we call life. That that would help me if you use it. Uh, how do I ah. explain? <laughs> so the so this person who has. Um, let go of those three paths. They because are, of having seen through the self and the world around you. Right, because they've seen through the self. Um, I just wonder if it's only birth and death exists in the way of dried grass at that stage. The, the linking of 12 things that bring it all to being fall apart. And you realize that it's just that is a construction too. The, the 12 links are no more real than suffering or nirvana. He, they're just flowers in space. But if we're not awake, they're real and real and real, and it sure hurts. Lose a, f a family member, and you'll see. Lose a pet, right? You'll see. We think it's real, because why? We love that pet, that family member, and they're gone. And, and it doesn't stop, you know. We, we uh, because, the Buddha said, because of good hydrami, because of the, the power of the womb, meaning our next rebirth, where we come into our first home, when we incarnate again, we forget about the past. We don't remember our last one. But when the bodhisattva, you could, here's another analogy, we're all under the surface of the water. Bodhisattvas, put their heads above the surface and they see 
this boundless ocean of birth and death. Kuhai, Wubian, right? And this, they say the sea of misery is vast. And for all of us, we're just in the water. Boom, 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 boom. Bodhisattva goes, oh, we're just all, like this is birth and death after birth and death, and everybody's doing it together. For us, are you aware that you're breathing oxygen right now? Not really, but we all are, you know. We're in the air together. We don't see the air, but we're sure dependent upon it entirely. So um, the birth and death that the Buddha is describing here is, from his description, endless, endless cycles of birth and death. This thing, this dance just goes on. And when you can stop it, you're free, Lord Almighty, free at last. Okay? I hope it's okay because time's up. How about this stuff? Isn't this amazing stuff? I mean, this is uh, biology, anthropology, physics, chemistry, psychology, all located in my next thought. That's the real kicker, because it's happening right this, this is an in vivo description of how the, where the world comes from. This is, furthermore, this is Buddhist cosmology. This is the answer to the Catholic catechism question, who made me? God made me, says Catholic. If you were raised Catholic, you were repeated that, you memorized that. Who made me? God made me. The Buddha says, well, not really. What's really going on? Twelve links. Ignorance covering everything. Break that and you realize you can un if God made you, you can unmake yourself. The self can be unmade. All right. <clears throat> Neat. That's why this is so interesting. Because it's the real story and it's empowering, right? You do it. You can undo it. That's, it doesn't matter who. It's not a male dominance. It's not a racial species dependent at all. Let's transfer the merit. We haven't done that yet. And it's on our, it's on this guy right here. If you have a songbook, it's on the back page of your songbook. And you can transfer the merit to the families of Michael Brown and, and Eric Garner and to the families of the policemen and women who are pawns in the game. Dylan has another song. They're only a pawn in the game. In the play, they're bit actors who happen to have the clubs in their hand this time. No policemen don't want to be demonized. They're trying to serve, right? But who are they serving? Transfer the merit. May we all wake up together. one and radiant with life share the fruits of peace with hearts of goodness luminous and bright if people hear and see how hands and hearts can find in giving unity May their minds away to great compassion, wisdom, and to joy. 
May kindness find reward May all who sorrow Leave their grief and pain May this boundless light Break the darkness of their endless night Because our hearts are one This world of pain turns into paradise May all become compassionate and wise May all become compassionate and wise